Alright everybody, this is the Dale Latitude D620. The specifications are on this unit. It's followed a 1.66 GHz Intel Core Duo T2300E chip. It's got a 2MB L2 cache and a 667FSB front side bus. 1.5GB of DDR2 RAM. Uh, a 40GB serial ATA hard drive at 5400 RPM and you don't have Bluetooth on this machine, but uh, you have an Intel uh, Graphics Media Accelerator GMA 950, and you have the Intel 945 GM chipset. Let's take a look at the uh, performance of this machine. I am going to first show you the results of using SuperPi. Um, the calculation to 32 million digits it says uh, 27 seconds the initial value finished 1 minute and 42 seconds loop 1 finished 3 minutes and 17 seconds loop 2 and finished uh, and we go all the way up to 7 minutes to finish loop 5 7 minutes and 31 seconds so that's that and um take a look at some graphics about need to speed underground 2 PC demo for uh, a look at graphics this is going to be off a 14.1 inch display. Remember, with the Intel GMA 950. I wonder if I turn off the light if that gives you a cooler look at the screen. I want to make sure the camera can still record it. The battery in this unit is a six cell. It gives me a good three and a half hours of battery life doing web browsing and YouTubing. So it's very good battery life and a very light package. So, computer very, very nice, as you can see, um, I will be upgrading to a 160GB SATA hard drive from Western Digital with their Scorpio series. I will be getting the, uh, it will spin at 7200RPM. I'm also going to get a 2GB uh, RAM stick to put in this thing. It has, on currently, it's got a 1GB RAM stick and a 512GB RAM stick. I'll just add, um, I'll replace the 512 with 2 gigs, so I'll have a total of 3 gigabytes of RAM in this notebook. It supports up to 4, however, uh, if you want to add more than 4, if, you know, the modern computers now, you would need a 64-bit processor. The Intel Core Duo is not 64-bit, however, the successor to it, the Intel Core 2 Duo chip, uh, is a 64-bit enabled processor, but you can upgrade this to a, uh, a 64-bit Intel Core 2 Duo chip, which is rather cool. So, that's a look at Need for Speed Underground 2 PC Demo. Let's turn the lights back on. I know we all love playing games here. So, this computer screen is a very, very nice, vibrant screen. Let me show you. In the outside here, it's going to stand by now. You have a uh, vent. Um, tick, 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 tick. You have a uh, Kensington lock. Yeah, Kensington lock. Uh, sorry about that. Smart card reader down here. Head microphone, microphone, headphone, uh, infrared, Wi Fi on and off, and a Wi Fi catcher. Very cool. I want to show you in a second. Um, and a uh, express card slot, which allows you to put in an express card. Obviously, pop that in on the front. You got a speaker on the uh, right side. Two USB ports, a uh, uh, DVD ROM and a CD ROM and a CD rewritable drive, and also replace it with a battery. And on the back, you have a vent where the actual air blows out of power, VGA, serial, two USB ports, modem, and Ethernet. Here you have um, the following lights. So I'll open up the computer. You can see those lights. Uh, it wasn't standby, so it's gonna wake up now. <coughs> Those following LED. Let me try to zoom in and then zoom out to get the camera focused really quickly. You can probably see power hard drive. All right, power hard drive. Uh, battery.
battery, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth if you get a Bluetooth card for it. Buy those on eBay for pretty cheap. So, I'm gonna log back on here to show you that Wi-Fi catcher. Windows Wireless Zero isn't the best, well, it's pretty poor in my opinion. So what you can do is, without even going to the system tray and pressing all that crap, you can just find the switch, well, right here. Oh, let me find it here. Okay, there we go. Okay, good, I didn't want to see that. But what you can do is you just slide the switch here. Watch this. It brings up this little window, okay? This little window, it's going to tell you everything. It's going to tell you where those Wi-Fi networks are that are in range. You know, the ones local to you. So, you can do that and find out what Wi-Fi networks are available for you to connect to. And you can choose that. There's no need to go into the system tray. This is uh, Dell's own wireless tool here. It's on the Latitude E6400, which I also reviewed earlier today. But all you do, it's very simple. You just slide this little switch right here. You're going to see that Wi-Fi switch. Just do this. Ready? Ah, hold on. There you go. Boom. And now, you can see what network. So this is very handy if you're at an airport or you don't want to screw around and have to go down to the system tray, right click and hit view available wireless networks. Just do this little switch. Boom. They show up. I'm connected to my home network right now because that's probably what it should be connected to. So that is very, very cool. Also, on this computer, you can see those buttons. Oh, it's, wow, it's the first time the camera got in focus, except it can't stay in focus, which is very depressing. Volume down, volume up, mute, and a power button. You can see this is uh, Windows Vista capable. It's got an Intel Core Duo chip, like I told you, in it. So, so you can see the specifications. Here's what I'm going to do. Find the specifications, right-click on my computer, and choose Properties. I'm going to zoom in, because the camera seems to get great focus when you spend an hour zooming in on it. Too bad I can't read that. Ah, now you can see it's got a genuine Intel Core 2 Duo, and you can see the system specifications right there. So, that is pretty cool, and, uh, so let's do a quick test here. Uh, we got like eight minutes left, I mean two minutes left, before we break YouTube's limit. So, if this computer can't make it, during this time period. I'm going to end this uh, video within 10 minutes. And I'm not sure how much space is on the memory card, but if the thing cuts out and says memory full, we just got our main review and so I'm pretty much done. I just want to, or if you actually want to, you can just see how fast this thing is when it boots up. Okay, so I'm going to start it. I have the latest BIOS installed, by the way. The camera doesn't stay in focus. Why? I don't know. It keeps making this crickety noise. I can hear it, and you can definitely hear it during the video. It's a Kodak EasyShare Z612. When it is in focus, it's a very nice camera. When it's not, it is terrible. Honestly, it's sad. It won't stay in focus. Of course, banging it against the table won't fix it. I haven't tried it though, not my camera. So you can see there's my username. I got a karate kid. So I mean, boom. You're all logged on. I don't care if you saw my password, I change it monthly. So, and I claim it's all booted up, but I'll just wait. It does that little screen flicker as you just saw. Uh. Okay, just loaded Windows Live Messenger. I use Skype most of the time, but whatever. Let's just do one final test, see how long it takes open Safari. Alright, I just hit open.
So I right click it so I can verify it. We're past our 10 minute barrier. Hope YouTube will still allow this video. If not, I'll have to trim it. And Safari is loading. And the stupid camera isn't. Boom, there you go. That's Facebook. Don't really want you folks to see my Facebook profile. Okay, so that's a review of the Dell Latitude D620. It's got a SIM card slot in the bottom, and it's got a nice metal chassis. I wish I could show you more, but the bottom is just like the uh, E6400 with a SIM card slot where the battery is. Alright, thank you, YouTubers.